Meningitis is uh, an infection of the fluid that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord and it can spread from that fluid into the brain itself. And it can be a really dangerous condition that can cause long-term damage to, your to, to the baby's developing brain. There are lots of different causes of meningitis. It can be a virus or a bacteria. And the one we're going to talk about now is one meningococcal meningitis, which is associated with a very characteristic rash. So you may know about the glass test. And that's a test where you can press the side of a glass against the spot of the rash on your child's skin. Usually, in rashes, and they're very common in children, that spot will disappear when you press it, and you'll be able to see that through the side of the glass. If you press the spot and it doesn't go away, that's called a non-blanching rash. And a non-blanching rash in a small child is a worrying sign. And that's something where you should immediately take your child along to see the GP or to your local emergency department. Way back in 1999, my son Thomas, he was at nursery in the morning and I picked him up, I think maybe 12 o'clock is one of those where you go at nine and finish at 12. And he was complaining that his, he was feeling tired and, you know, it was, oh, my legs are tired, my legs are tired. And I'd be like, oh, come on, Tom, you know, stop being silly because he, sometimes he'd be a bit lazy and, mm -hmm. but no, mum, my legs are tired, my legs are tired. Got him home and he went straight to bed, which was quite unusual for him. And later on that afternoon, his father came back and I said, oh, Tom's been feeling a bit, you know, a bit funny and he's been asleep for a long, long time. So we took his temperature and it was extremely high. And we called up the doctor and they said, well, just keep an eye on him. And he woke up a bit later and yet again, he wasn't, he wasn't looking right. He was feeling, and he just didn't seem right. And if I remember then, um, Alex phoned up his mother and she said, oh, I think maybe you should, you know, maybe go to the doctor. And then we saw the rash and only a few spots on his chest, not really spots, but Bruno's tiny little red, deep red marks. And at that point we panicked and um, it was late at, well at this point it was fairly late at night and jumped in the car. I drove like a mad woman, um, Alex in the back, went through every single red light, hand on the horn and drove to St Mary's. Alex took him straight up. Um, I had to park within literally seconds. There was about six doctors around him and they weren't quite sure really at this point what it was. And then that, that was it within, you know, 10 minutes, no more than that, he was up in intensive care. And it was meningococcal septicemia, which is the highest form of meningitis. And even to the to, even to the day, they said if we, we were lucky that we got we're nearer to St Mary's because St Mary's is the hospital for meningitis. And we were lucky that we went there straight away. If we'd been an hour later, without a doubt, he would have been dead. And I'm very pleased to tell you that Thomas is now healthy and survived a horrible, horrible, horrible meningitis.